Alright, welcome back to the next video in our UI UX no code fundamental pillar series. That's quite a mouthful. Now, um, we've already taken a look at repeating data lists in a bit of detail around about the examples and what you can do with them, how they function, etc. But I wanted to bring that to life a little bit with a demo in Webflow and just show you what it looks like to take some data, put that into repeating data list. And, and sort of, you know, bring it into the UI with some different customizable elements. So we're in Webflow, uh, which we've looked at before in the UI components, and um, I'm still using broadly the same design uh, that we came up with in the earlier demo video. I've changed it up a little bit, and um, I've also made a few changes to the database. So Webflow has a pre-made CMS, which stands for Content Management System. In other words, it's a database of content. Uh, now, I can access that by clicking over here. I've created one CMS collection, which is equivalent of a database table already, and it's called Blog Posts. Uh, I've got various uh, demo blog posts in here. I haven't actually created them. Webflow will let you generate this data uh, with a simple click. So um, they're all very generic. It's all fake. Uh, we've got kind of what you call lorem ipsum or holding text in here, uh, various different images, etc. But that does give us a starting point for playing around with our, uh, our repeating data list. So we've got 10 items in here. Uh, for each item, we've got a name, we've got a slug, which is a URL, we've got the post body, um, otherwise the, the kind of main text, we've got the post summary or a kind of brief description, we've got a main image, a smaller thumbnail image, uh, and we've got a colour uh, that fits this blog post as well. If I click down to this other one, you can see a different colour, different pictures, um, different post, etc. So the data doesn't matter too much, we're going to play around with it, but just to give you an idea of what fields we've got available to us. Um, now, if I pop back to my interface, when we look for a repeating data list in Webflow, we call this a collection list or a dynamic collection list. I'm going to just immediately drag this in and you'll see what happens is um, Webflow prompts me to connect this list to um, a source, which obviously is one of our CMS collections. And remember, a CMS collection is equivalent of a database table. It's just what Webflow calls it. Um, and it's also got one, two, three items here. And if you remember from a previous video, you know, when we dragged in something like a div block, uh, that obviously kind of creates a box around it for one block. Well, this is clearly indicating, you know, several different blocks for the CMS uh, list. So we just grab the source, we'll grab the blog post, and you can immediately see uh, what happens here. Suddenly each little block here, now these blocks are invisible because we've not put anything in it yet. So although the list is there, if I preview, there's nothing to actually see. Um, but what you can see is it's given each uh, each of the blocks a, a kind of name that's visible only to us in Designer, and clearly those marry up against the names of the different uh, blocks we've got, or sorry, blogs that we've got on here. And uh, if you count those up, not that you have to, you'll see that there are ten. So. Immediately what we can start doing is putting elements into uh, these blog posts to kind of shape how they're going to look to the end user. And there's a ton of different stuff we can do here. So we can play around. Now I'm going to drag a heading in. And uh, immediately I'm given a bunch of headings. I mean, that's given me 10 straight away. And the reason it's given me 10 is because there are 10 uh, items in the data list. So everything that I put into one collection item or, or into, into the collection list into one item is going to show up in all of them. Every change that I make, for example, let's set this to the left, is going to affect every single element because this is a repeating data list. Every item, although it will have different content, must visually look the same. So if we just go ahead, now let's say we want this heading to contain the blog post name. If I hit the configuration option here, in Webflow I have a few options around essentially dynamic data that I can pull in. So I can choose to get the text from blog posts. In other words, pull the text through as a variable. And I've got a few that I can uh, select in terms of fields. Um, and if you if you look here, I've kind of got name, post, summary, etc. But I've also got plain text, date, time. These are just references to the uh, different data types that Webflow supports. So I'm just going to go with the name. Uh, which is a blog post and uh, you know let's just take the size down a little bit that's pretty big let's well let's change it and make it a um, let's say a h3 so that immediately makes it a little bit smaller and uh, let's just pull that over to the left 
Again, these are all just configuration options, but I want to kind of show you how this can all fit together. And I'm totally winging this. I've not really come up with a design in my head. So again, uh, <laughs> like the rest of the design, it may look pretty terrible. Now, what I've done there is just drag another paragraph in, and I'm just going to select, get the text again. It's going to take it from the post summary. Um, now, again, that's just going to look like a filler text, but let's just double check if it works. So seven must-have tools for web designers, Modi, Volup. Tatum Voluptus, maybe someone watching this uh, speaks Latin and knows what that means, but um, if I pop in here uh, to that post and I look at the post summary, clearly it's got it correct. So that's now all pulling through from our database. Again, we can add some styling elements there, etc. Now, what we can do, the, the collection item itself is treated like a container, just like our container components, just like our div block, just like our section. So we can style that individually. So for example, I can add uh, you know, 20 pixels here, 20 pixels there, I can push it in a little bit and this is just going to give it a nice kind of spaced out appearance, I mean that immediately looks better. One of the things that we can do is we could add, for example, a bottom border. So I'm going to add a border just uh, in between all of these, let me make it, oh, why am I putting that in there? Uh, that's what you call a 11, uh, quarter past 11pm type of mistake. So I'll immediately put this little uh, border line in. You can argue all day about whether it looks good or not, it doesn't really matter, um, it's just to kind of show you how these elements look. So I've just put a bottom border on there rather than a top. If I had put a full border on like this, um, it would probably look a little bit more like that, but that looks dreadful, so let me just get rid of that. In fact, actually, let's leave that on there because there's something else we can do. So what I can do is if I add a little bit of margin to this first collection item, it's going to push all of them. In fact, let's make a little bit more margin. It's going to push all of them like that, and so you can immediately see um, again, how, how the design just repeats itself over and over. Let's go into preview. The design is just going to repeat itself over and over like that. Now, what we can do is let's go and add a button in. Um, and what we want that button to do is take us to the, uh, the actual blog post itself. So we're going to put C post. Um, and uh, there's a few options I've got here. Uh, let's make it kind of sit over to the side. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a float. Uh, is that going to work? Nope, sorry, not clear, a float. So that'll just push the button over to the side. Um, and then I'm going to style that button a little bit as well. I think I'm going to use this green color. Let me just grab the hex code for that. I forgot what it was off by heart. Uh, so I think we'll use that green color. We'll set that as the uh, color. We'll set the radius as 25. Um, and that should make us a nice button. Let's maybe make that text, uh, let's make it brown like this nav bar. We'll grab that hex code as well. Again, this isn't really intended to show you how Webflow itself works. It's more about the repeating data list and the fact that you can you can just take any data you've got and turn it into something visual. So don't worry too much about where I'm clicking around on Webflow itself. It, you don't really need to pick that up from this video. Um, so there's a couple other things we can do. If we wanted to add a, um, a screenshot in there, or not a screenshot, um, a, an image. One of the things that we could do is drag a div block in, um, and I'm going to make that the thumbnail image. So we're going to add a background. Now that's just going to come up with this generic background image, but what I can actually do is go into uh, the configurations again, and you'll see I've got this option to get the BG image, which is background image, from the blog post. So I can take the thumbnail, um, now you can see it's trying to bring an image, it doesn't quite look right, so let's configure that background image, let's hit uh, contain, let's stop tiling, and there you go, we've immediately got this image here. Um, I can make a couple of other changes, so I can centre that, and then let's make that into a circle, because as you've probably noticed, I love making circular div blocks. Um, and then let's give that a height as well. So we make that 40 pixels by another 40 pixels. That's a little bit small actually. So let's do 80 by 80. Um, and so uh, it doesn't look the best the way that I've done that, but it gives you an idea of how I can uh, just kind of squeeze an image in here and, and make it look like something, you know. And there's all sorts of stuff I could do to play around with that layout, you know. Um, I can mess around with some of these buttons. What they actually do doesn't really matter a huge amount, but just shows you that I can, uh, if I so choose, you know, mess around with it, do some different stuff here. Um, we'll go back to my original design. I kind of preferred that. The other thing that I could do, if I didn't want to use a background image, I could just grab an image uh, field. And this is, again, just showing the customizability. I can get the image, 
Uh, let's grab the main image, and this is going to do a really big one. Now I could uh, limit that in terms of size, let's say uh, 500 pixels, oh, let's go a little bit bigger than that. Yeah, no, 500, we'll stick with that. You know, I could do something like that, uh, and that will just kind of automatically scale it. I can play around with that if it doesn't look right. Um, you know, if I really, really want to, I can float that over to the left as well. That will kind of push everything a little bit. So, you know, there's all sorts of different stuff I can do just to configure this and play with it. But let's say we wanted to do, you know, we've got 10 blog posts here. Let's say we only wanted to show three. Well, what can we do? Um, we can add a, a limit on there. So right now we're showing up to 100 and there's only 10. You know, if I change that to 10, nothing's going to change because there are only 10. Let's see what happens if I change that to two. So we're saying show two of them. And if I scroll down, I'm only going to see two, three, etc., etc. And uh, if we go ahead and change where we start at, so notice how seven must have tools for web designers, number one, 10 great examples of responsive websites, number two. Let's say I want to start at two rather than one. What happens? Well, suddenly this one becomes the first one and we get this new blog post uh, showing up here as well. So we'll go back to where we were, start at one. It show 100, excuse me. Um, so that'll just get us back to the kind of original list we had. So that is how a limit works, really, really simple stuff. Um, one of the other things that we can do is we can, um, we can change this list so that, for example, we sort it in a certain order. So right now we're sorting by um, just the default, like the order they're in in a database. We could sort it uh, completely by name alphabetically. So we're going to have 10, 10 things, yada, yada, yada. Now these are numbers, so, um, you know, clearly it's mostly going to sort the numbers first, but you can see that the posts are now in alphabetical order, and I could also sort them uh, by alphabetical, and then I can change, for example, the created date. It might not change anything, but what that would just do is mean that if you've got two tools that are at the same place, for example, you've got uh, two that begin with a 7 or an A or something like that, it will then uh, switch them around based on the second sorting order and it does it in the order that these are uh, listed in as well. So if you want to use more than one sorting option, you can do that. Um, and then let's have a look at filters. Now we might not have anything we can filter by. Um, so here's what we could do. Uh, let's say we wanted to filter by uh, any blog post which is featured. So we're only showing a featured blog post. So I'm going to switch this uh, feature to on for our seven uh, must have tools for web designers and then I'm going to filter this list to say uh, the featured switch must be set to on. So if I filter that then uh, oh clearly uh, sorry must, some of these must already be filtered. Yes they are so a few of these uh, apologies uh, are already filtered I should have checked that so you can see some of them are uh, set to feature uh, some others are set to feature that one's not set to feature uh, this one's set to feature this next one isn't set to feature. So you can see that some of them are and aren't set to feature. So any ones that are set to feature will show up just like this. And if I go back to my filter, there's all sorts of stuff I could play with. Um, I could I could do it the other way around. So I see everything that's not featured. There you go. Uh, I could take that filter out, which will take us back to where we were. I can take that sort out. That will take us back to the original list as we had it. Um, and then another thing that I can do is go into this filter and I can, for example, I can take the published date, uh, I can say, you know, if it's uh, after the equal one day in the past, then show it. Um, I could change that to two days, see if it makes a difference. I'm not quite sure exactly what date it shows these as published, but you can play around with all these different things and, uh, and see how they show up. Now, what I've done there is I've set the published date to be two days in the future. Now, clearly, uh, these aren't going to show up because I've set the... I've, the published date is set by when I published it and therefore I published it today and not two days in the future which would be the 18th of March therefore no items are going to be found uh, this is quite a common thing with a repeating data list if you're going to have user defined content you better think about what it's going to look like if the answer to your filters is nothing if there's no data showing so we can configure that as well we can make it look nice uh, you know for example we could set the, uh, the background to transparent uh, and that'll just kind of hide it, it'll just make it come up, you know, nothing found. We could change that to be size 22, we can bold that, etc, etc. So it just gives you an idea um, of how that empty state works there as well. Um, the, 
there, there's kind of one just uh, one last thing that I wanted to show you. So if I delete that filter and I've got my, my typical list, I wanted to show you just some of the cool stuff that you can do by limiting. I think it's cool. You might not think it's very cool. Um, and I also show you pagination as well. But one of the things that we do, I mentioned in the no code um, uh, previously on the no code tech website, we have this idea of tool of the month, which is essentially just one CMS item that we feature at the top of the page. So let's say we've got this here as a um, a, a, a list of blog posts. Um, we're just going to limit that to five. And uh, we're going to put another heading in uh, just to separate this off. So, oops, that's dragging in. So we're just going to put one uh, right in here and that's going to say all blog posts because what we're going to do up here is say uh, latest uh, blog post. Now, in a tool like Webflow, you won't always do this uh, where repeating data lists because you won't always have to, but in a tool like Webflow, you don't have basic uh, variable support. You only have repeating data lists, and this can be something that happens in a few no-code tools. And so if you're not able to pull a single variable from a single um, you know, database entry, like if I just wanted to pull out this one blog post, I can't do it without using a repeating data list. What I can do is... I can drag another collection uh, list in there, so that's a totally new list, and I can reconnect it to my blog posts. So you're kind of going, okay, well, you've just got the same list again, and that's true. But look what happens when I limit that to one. Well, suddenly I've only got one, and I can now drag in and style whatever elements I like based off of this tool. So if I want to say my latest blog post is going to be... Um, uh, we're, you know, we're going to pull the fault line from it, we're going to say it's going to be this seven days one, uh, we're going to drag a special heading in there as well into that collection item, we're going to take the text, uh, sorry I know I'm covering it slightly with my big face here, um, and so there you go, we've kind of done our, our, our latest blog post, and I might change that as well, let's try, I don't know how this is going to look, let's try this text colour on top of it just to make it stand out, just make it interesting, uh, it's not quite what I meant to do, Sorry, I meant to put that in here. Again, that's an 11.30 type mistake. No, nope, that doesn't quite show up right. Let's try it as white. Perfect, that works. It's not great, but it works. So that's just an example of how I can sort of show one item. Uh, now I'm just gonna add a bit of space in here to just to push this away. But what I can essentially do is because I've limited this to one item, I can use it to display variables on Webflow and you can use the same technique, you know, put a repeating data list in and then limit it to one item to show whatever you want um, on a no-code tool that doesn't support proper variables. However, if I don't want to show uh, seven must-have uh, tools for, for designers and I don't really want to try and guess, um, you know, in my limit sort of what, you know, is it item number one, uh, sorry, is it item number one, is it item number three, etc. I don't have to, because what I can do is filter by name. So let's have a quick look at the rest of our blog posts. Let's say we want to filter by why we love Webflow, and you should too. You should, by the way. Let's put a filter in. Now we have, a, we can do a why we love Webflow, and you should too. Now this is going to look for it exactly. So I might not bring up anything. Nope, I got it right. Because it is going to look for the exact text. You know, if I maybe change that to um, a lowercase w, and it's going to hide it because you've got to get this text match exactly right. Um, and by the way, this is just an example of a conditional um, or an if statement. Um, and the equals is a sign uh, or as an example of an operator. So that just shows you how that works. So I can just change that to whatever one I like. And what we do is when we host the tool of the month on nocode.tech, we just change that. You know, the name is Adalo, the name is Backendless, whatever the tool might be. Um, we'll just host that. Hopefully you can see that already uh, at nocode.tech slash uh, tools. Um, you can go and check that out and see exactly what it looks like. So... Um, that's going to wrap it up for uh, this video. In fact, no, sorry, one last thing. Uh, I did mention that I would show you pagination, so let's actually just do it on this list. So what we can do, uh, sorry, we're paginating, is we can limit the number of items per page. So we've just limited that to four. And then what happens is when I go into preview, it generates this next button. And when I click that, it will just show any missing blog posts. So I just wanted to show you that pagination, um, you know, it means you don't have to, if you've got 100 blog posts, you don't have to have this massive scrollable page. You can just 
let your users click through next and previous to get where they want to go. You can limit the number of items per page. As you bring that up, you'll see it goes down to one page of one. If I take that right back down at one page of five, if I take it back to a few, uh, not 24. <laughs> if I take that back to a few, then we end up with kind of, uh, um, there we go, one of three pages. So that's just kind of showing uh, how that sort of works. So that's pagination. Uh, again, pagination, pagination, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not an every no-code tool. You can build it yourself. Uh, I did a uh, cover in the previous video just an example of how you can actually build that. And the instructions are there. Um, but yeah, this is Webflow. If you want to get a bit more of an understanding, check it out yourself. You can uh, make a, a website on here. You can auto-generate uh, CMS items. Then you can play with repeating data lists. I definitely recommend trying it out. Thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video.